Got a Jimmy Johnson story now that he's a Hall of Famer? I'm just so happy he's a Hall of Famer. And, and I saw him so emotional. You guys saw him. He was just so happy and emotional, man. Yeah, I'm but so, we, need a, we need a good. Yeah, that's what I would say. I was you like, got a good where, story for him? Where is this fella from? Who is this emotional fella that has emotions and feelings? <laughs> didn't, I didn't even know he had these things in him. <laughs> he, he didn't what? have that with you? Right. I've known him since I was 17 <laughs> years old. I've never seen these kinds of emotions, you know. Jimmy would, Jimmy would oh, my God. And he knew. He knew he had come and got a lot of us from the ghettos of, of these of Miami and for a lot of the other very ghettos. And, it, and when we did not have good practices, he would always bring us up and say, I know you guys and everybody in your family think we made it out. We got it. You got a four year scholarship. He said, but I'm tell you something. You didn't read the fine print. <laughs> Those scholarships are one year renewable. And if we don't get better practice, I'm sending all of you back to where you came from. And you talking about some practices, man. Uh, oh, right up in Miami, man. We used to have, because we used to sit back, dude, you, you well, all right, boy, you, we get three square meals over here a day. You know, you're on scholarship, so you got a, tra you, you got a training table. Back in the ghetto, there was no training table. <laughs> you better get these practices right, man, so we don't have to go back to that. But, uh, but yeah, I was just so happy for him because, really, he deserves it. He, he earned it. And I, I always thought about Coach Johnson because I love him to death. I love him to death. I told Coach Johnson, I said, man, because Coach Schnellenberger recruited me. I said, I came to Miami, and you followed me. Then I went to Dallas, and you <laughs> followed me. I mean, you just followed me. You're going to the Hall of everywhere. Fame, and he's following me. And you. I went to the Hall, and he <laughs> followed me, right. But, man, I, I, I love him, man. I'm just so happy for him. If uh, not the you, where would you have gone? Uh, you know, and, and back then I had just lost my father. And, and, and honestly, honestly, I, I, I was looking at LSU and Syracuse. I went to Syracuse. It was so cold. Had you been in the cold before? I had never been in the cold. <laughs> it was the first time seeing snow. And I had on a pair of penny loafers. I didn't even have any socks on. And I was stepping in the snow like, oh, my God. But, but since I grew up with 16 brothers and sisters, Syracuse was the first place I visited. And they had an apartment. They had me sold right there. They said I was going to have my own bed. I said, that's all I need. <laughs> <laughs> so I was ready to sign So you sign almost went Syracuse. to Syracuse. Oh, just for a bed, man. That's you it. talk about how bad things were. <laughs> just for a bed, they were going to get my services. And, until I, when I visited Miami, they said, we got a bed, too. Your own bed right there. So, so I ended up going to Miami. And it was closer to home, too. It was closer to home. I just lost my father, and I wanted to stay close to my mom, and, and, and it worked out. Back then, they only gave you, like, $20 a weekend. You know, now the kids get, you know, a couple thousand dollars a month. Because I know my, my son, you know, he, he, he gets a stipend. We got about twenty dollars a weekend, man, and, and I had to send fifteen of that home, so I had five to get through the weekend. So, so it, it was different. For more Dan Patrick Show, tune in to Audience Channel Two Thirty Nine on Directv, stream for free on BR Live, or download the Dan Patrick Show app.